Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the world's biggest stars. And we've got one for you today, live from Las Vegas. Jen Kirkman is the lady who's coming to the Soho Theatre. She'll be there for six nights from the 16th of November and she joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. That was a very sweet intro. So what is it about me you don't like? I leave Las Vegas on the 24th of October, you fly in. I leave New York yesterday and you fly in today. What is it about me that you don't want to meet me in person? (laughs) I'm intimidated by you. I am afraid if we meet, it'll be too powerful. Mm. The chemistry might just be overwhelming and your lady urges might just be overtaken by my man sausage. What do you think? I think that's what it is, and I just don't, you know, I have to focus on my show coming up, and, and I, you really can't distract me like this. So. Just to paint a picture, I am ginger, slightly chubby, and there's not much downstairs, so you're not missing that much, Jen, to be perfectly oh, honest okay. with you. Well, then you know what? <laughs> Somehow feel you'll have had better offers, but never mind. <laughs> I got to know about you through the Chelsea Handler show, Chelsea Lately, and I watched that show every night. It was compelling uh, for many of the wrong reasons, but you really shone in it, and you've got such great appeal. I love the fact you've got an acid tongue, but you're so charming with it. Well, that's nice. Well, thank you. I would never have said that about myself. There is, though. There's a great warmth about you, and I think that's how people like you get away with it. I love the Joan Rivers, the Kathy Griffins, the Lisa Lampanellis, yourself. Feisty women who have got something to say. I'm not really that bothered about listening about relationship dramas and periods. That doesn't turn me on. This is going to suck, because I do, <laughs> I do a lot of material about relationships, but not just romantic ones. Every relationship we have in our life, whether it's family or friends that are driving us crazy, that you know, that kind of thing, but... <laughs> I'm telling you, you might like one of my jokes that's about my period. You might. It's just about what an idiot I am and that I'm getting older. Yeah, well, we're... But otherwise, I know know what you mean. We all have that in common. I don't like hearing about people's marriages, even though all I talk about is relationship stuff. But I think in a way that I'm an idiot and, and it's enjoyable. It's not like... You know what I mean? I don't try to take other people down. The thing is, you've got a punchline. I like that about you. So many comedians today just seem to go on and waffle. You do know where you're going with it, and it's so beautifully crafted. I wonder how long it took you to feel that comfortable on stage, because you make it look Um, easy, and it's not. No, and I think, well, I always say every comic is kind of mental, so we're always comfortable on stage, I think. Most of us who do it, we're comfortable when we shouldn't have been, when we were so terrible that... We should not have been comfortable at all. And then then you earn your comfortability much later. So I think I was always comfortable getting up on stage. And then, for, I don't know, probably, I've been doing it 18 years. Probably the 10th year I started to realize, oh, this is where I should put a punchline. And my style is kind of conversational, but I can still have punchlines in it. And this is how it should be done. Once you start practicing a lot, and in America we call it going on the road, and you know, going around and doing it an hour a night, it just starts to become second nature. But sadly, I was always comfortable even when I was admittedly terrible. You were just in Las Vegas last weekend. They do this thing on a Saturday night called Lipstick, which is fantastic with all these wonderful, fabulous female comedians who some nail it and some don't. Um, it's, it's tough, Vegas, isn't it? Because half the audience are drunk and half of them just want to go to sleep because it's the first time they've sat down in days. Oh, my God. By the way, I, yes, I did this show last weekend with another comedian from Chelsea lately named Fortune Beamster, who's brilliant and she's great. There was a man asleep in the front row, just passed out to <laughs> <story. laughs> But the good news is, is when you're in Vegas, you don't take it personally because you understand that he hasn't been asleep in a day and then it's not personal. But he came up to us after the show and hugged us. Oh, I loved it. We're like, you were sleeping. Yeah. But yeah, Vegas is tough because it's like, you don't really know why anyone is in that room. It could be because they just lost a slot machine and they need to cool out for a minute (laughs) (laughs) they're so drunk they just need to sit down it's not exactly where you go to explore your art it's where you go to just hit them with laughs and get a bigger paycheck than normal and then get back home (laughs) yeah what's great about you you've got a sort of multi-platform career as well as your stage the books have been very successful as an author i mean you did very well and then the podcasting i I wonder whether this is the reason for your genius now that you have to do many jobs and do them well to survive just doing one thing is risky isn't it yeah doing one thing is risky because it's so hard to get even something like twitter which i love but if i posted hey everybody i'm you know whatever i'm coming to town most people would miss it. It's like you have to do a lot of things so that you can grab the attention of some people
people here and there. And, you know, I bet that people who read my books may not even know that I do stand-up. Some people that love my Netflix special have no idea I wrote a book. And so I'm not trying to hit everyone from all angles. My hope was that everyone likes everything I do. But I'm realizing from doing so many different things, I have a lot of different audiences. I didn't set out to do that. It just sort of happened. So I think that's actually really good because um, – then I can sort of, yeah, I can stay afloat, I can keep working, and I like doing all different kinds of things because I do get bored with just one way of expressing myself. I like to do a lot of different things because with books you can take a longer journey, it can be a little more serious, a stand-up, it's, it's in and out, it's being funny, so I like to do a little of everything. I'm right in thinking that it was Chelsea Lately that brought you to the UK sort of appeal, it was that show that exposed you to a wide audience, is that right? I think that's absolutely true because I know our show was on there. You know what was funny is we, you know, we went to Australia to tape some episodes and we always wanted to go to the UK and what, what Chelsea was told by the powers that be was that the, the people of the UK thought she was very polarizing and yeah, you never know what's going to happen overseas but, but we, um, I do think a lot of people who came to see me at Soho last time had found me from Chelsea lately and then a lot of the comedians that play London I'm involved with whether people hear me on their podcasts or or things like that. But yeah. definitely, I think this time I'm hoping that more people have seen, um, in addition to Chelsea, but, but we haven't been on the air in a year, that people have seen my Netflix special, which streamed in the UK. So I'm hoping that there'll be another wave of, of new people coming. But yeah, absolutely, Chelsea was the thing that that gave me a touring career um, in America and overseas. I don't know why she gave up that show. It seemed to me she got very big very quick. I heard her on Howard Stern sort of ranting and raving as how bored she was. And I get that doing a show every day like a radio show can be laborious and, and monotonous. But we sort of miss yeah. her. When's she coming back? She seems to have disappeared. She's been working on a project with Netflix, but it's not going to be, I don't think, so much the same as Chelsea lately. And I don't think it'll be comedic. I think she wants to. She's a smart girl, and I think she... Um, I think it pained her. You know, we're all very sensitive creatures. I think it pained her that that she had to talk about celebrities, even though I don't think anybody watching thought she was stupid, but it just started to bother her after so many years, and yeah. I think she wanted to talk about the things that she cared about, and I don't think the E! Network really wanted her to divul you know, divert yeah. from the celebrity thing. So I think now her new show will be probably a little smarter, but I'm not really sure. I know they're still figuring it out. She always had a contempt, though, for celebrity. For That's what we kept telling her. We're like, no, we love that. People love that about you. But I think she just wanted to, you know, at a certain point, if you have all this money and you have no free time, I think it can feel like a trap. And I think she really just wanted to see the world and relax a little bit. And so I, I think that's where she's been. She's mm. just been gallivanting and, and getting ready for her next thing. Well, good for her. And the chemistry between you both was great. Some of the comedians on there, she may look very stupid and put them down and interrupted them before they got to their punchline. You, she let you finish. Why was that? Just because you were mates and she thought you were funny? Well, I think because I wrote for her on the show and, yeah. and I was her employee and also a friend in real life. And, and I think she was, you know, we're very different in a lot of ways. I think she was yeah. probably amused by what I might say because she might not... Um, thought about things that way and I think she just got a kick out of me I think other people I don't know if this reference will be lost in the UK or not but when Richard Simmons would come on David Letterman yes. and just the whole point of it was just for David Letterman to make fun of him until he yeah. cried <laughs> I think Chelsea I think Chelsea deliberately had that relationship with a lot of the comedians and they were in on it too yeah. um, so you know I don't think they would have come back if they were really upset but that was kind of I think what which she was going for with some people, which is the joke is I am never letting you speak because, uh, you know, she, for some reason, when it could be what you're wearing that day, it could be anything. She, if she finds you ridiculous that day. It is interesting in this country, we don't have as many hard women in comedy as you do, like the Lisa Lampanellis, as I say, and the, uh, the Joan Rivers, yeah. who we miss dreadfully, although Joan was popular here. I mean, some comedians have come across. Sarah Silverman tried playing uh, the Apollo and died on her ass and had to leave stage early. I mean, there is a risk coming across here. How do you know that your stuff travels? Do you just make it about the human being opposed to sort of topical stuff or celebrity stuff? Yeah, for, for my act, I really don't talk much about celebrities unless, you know, the first five minutes of my act is always a little improvised based on whatever happens to me that day or some crazy happening in the news. So there there will always be a little bit of topical, but mostly I just talk about me and the way, you know, dumb things that happen to me walking around in the world or, you know, getting older or getting divorced or my family. I just talk about sort of the human experience, but I found that that, that sometimes doesn't play. 
play overseas. It didn't play that well in Dublin where people were yelling, you should have made your marriage work. That's what they were heckling at me. It was very Catholic, <laughs> heckling. <laughs> well, they mean well. But, <laughs> like, they might have a point. I was, and I talk a lot about how I don't have kids, and, and I think that resonates with a lot of women. But last time I was in London, uh, people seemed to really like it, but I noticed that um, they're very polite. Like, the, the laughing is not... People aren't rolling over laughing. They're, they're listening. And then later they come up to you and they say, that was brilliant, I loved mm. it. And I was like, We're, you need to laugh louder. No, so Jen, we laugh on the stuff. inside. I know it's not very helpful to yeah. you, but we... <laughs> no, it's not. And so, and so, but everyone knows that and all the comedians tell each other, like, don't think you're bombing. Just if there is... is if They'll let you know if they hate you, but if they're just a little quiet, it might mean they like you. So it's tough, but I think if you talk about the human experience, people anywhere can relate, but yeah. then different cultures different cultures respond to it. I think sometimes laughing too loud means, oh, I've experienced that, and a lot of cultures are more polite than America, and they don't mm. want. Talking of which, you mentioned that um, you're not married with a husband, and you do have a lot of time by yourself and no children. Have you ever Googled yourself on YouTube to see your most popular clip? Well, I have. I Oh, I know what it is. I bet it's the masturbation clip, right? Yes, female masturbation. Uh, can we call it lady tickling? Because that's much more civilized for this type of radio show. Lady tickling. Also, I, don't even, I don't even know why they... I never called it female masturbation. Someone else is like it. But I have to say that that bit, that that's on YouTube, is so old. It's such a much funnier bit now, but... But whatever. <laughs> I suspect the guys that were Googling that were not hoping for a female comedian to be talking about it. <laughs> that is true. They're probably like, when do her clothes come up? Right? I think you should call all of your bits by different sexual actions just to get to the top of YouTube. I think it's marvelous. I'm just going yeah, to call it love. Yeah, like just live nude women. You could do a new bit about pearl necklace, something like that. I'll leave it with you. Parties. Like, I don't know what they call them in the UK, but, but men who are getting married and going out for one last night with their Stag boys. Stag do's, we Come call it. My, oh, okay, yeah, coming to my comedy shows. And I'm like, I'm not taking my clothes off. You know, this is, <laughs> you want to go, you know, you're in a different, you should go somewhere else. But, um, but yeah, that, that is a popular bit. Well, people are dirty birds. Yeah, God bless them. And, well, you've got to do things to get through these cold winter nights. And very finally, before they cut us off, um, being a female comedian, being beautiful and talented, what's it like on the road? Because these clubs are pretty seedy and dark and miserable. There's a lot of travelling for very little performing. Is it a miserable life? Are you crying on the inside? No, I love it. Well, I'm in a level now where I get to pick and choose where I play. So I play really top-line comedy clubs. I play theatres. I, I play um, wherever I want, basically, and my fans are amazing, a lot of them are men, and they're not, you know, uh, being creeps, and, and uh, I really don't have any negative experiences as a woman, with the exception of, I might have to have extra security walk me back to the hotel, things that, like, in the world, being a woman, affect you, or cab drivers that hit on me, but otherwise, audiences are amazing, the club owners aren't creeps, um, it's truly not as dark as people think it is, I think especially because I kind of have a name for myself, so I don't have to play... Yeah. The grosser, grosser places. But no, thank God, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it otherwise. How would an ugly guy like me get a date with you? I don't know. I mean, I listen. I've dated ugly guys, but I'm, I'm sort of seeing someone now, so I, I think. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You could have denied I'm ugly. Come on, that wasn't very nice. You were agreeing with me. <laughs> no, but I that was your cue to deny <laughs> it. <laughs> I have no idea what you look like, but I'm, I am not the type of girl thinks that George Clooney and John Hamm are handsome, if that, if that helps anybody out there. Oh, so it gives all munters so, like me hope, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I'm a more of like an androgynous kind of David Bowie kind of looking guy, so, so I really think that, you know, there's hope for a lot of people. Listen, I think you're tremendously talented. Thank you very much for talking to me today. I'm so sorry I miss you in Vegas. I was so hoping to see it, but my plane unfortunately took off at nine and you didn't start till nine. So it was either you or getting to New York and <laughs> New York won, unfortunately. Uh, Jen Kerman is coming to the UK for six nights from the 16th of November. I can't wait to see you at the Soho Theatre there for six nights, 16th of November. You can find out more by going to her website, putting Jen Kirkman into Google and it'll either come up with female masturbation or her website. Uh, Jen, <laughs> lovely to talk to you. You too. Thank you so much, Alex.